Tricky question for the speaker. Let's bring in, thank you very much, Kelly O'Donnell, for that report. Joining us right now is U.S. Congressman Joe Sestak. He's a Democrat of Pennsylvania. He sits on the Armed Services Committee. And U.S. Congressman Dan Lundgren has been with us so often. He's a Republican of California who sits on Homeland Security and on Judiciary. Uh, Congressman Sestak, you first. Now, this is a tricky situation. You were in those briefings. But is Nancy Pelosi being dragged into this story? Is she being made to share the blame for the torture? You know, I'm, I really think what we have to do is what I said when this all began. Stop this he said, she said stuff and establish a commission, an outside commission, because we are too partisan, that actually begins to learn what occurred. For example, Chris, back when you worked for Senator Church, as you were leaving his staff, they established the Church Commission because of the CIA abuses of assassinations. What happened with the recommendation that we have select intelligence committees that were established? And let's find out. Why did it occur that right. evidently some were briefed or some white? So my point of all this is, let's, I understand what President Obama does once go forward, but if we don't clean up what occurred and find out, we'll just be the Hatfields and McCoys, you know, coming back at each other. We won't learn anything for the public good. Yeah, it's actually, I didn't work for Senator Church, but I did respect him. Uh, let me go to uh, this well, other question. We did question. establish the Intelligence Committees. Let's oh, find I know out why about that. I was... I was a student of that. I did watch closely what they tried to do with clean up the mess over there. Let's take a look at Speaker Pelosi here and what she says about that CIA briefing and how she said she was, well, lied to, if not her words, certainly her meaning here. I'm telling you that they, they talked about uh, interrogations that they had done and said we want to use enhanced techniques and we have legal opinions that say that they are okay. We are not using waterboarding. That's the only mention that they were not using it. And we now know that earlier they were. So yes, I am saying that they are misleading, that the CIA was misleading the Congress. Well, let's go. Uh, here's a House Minority Leader John Boehner today on this very topic as well, jumping in on this story. And it's hard for me to imagine uh, that anyone in our intelligence uh, area would ever mislead uh, a member of Congress. I don't know what motivation uh, they would have. It's hard to keep up with this all, uh, Congressman Lundgren, but here he goes. I know everybody has a political point of view. I'm trying to follow the narrative here. First account from the speaker was that she was told they w had authorization to use these enhanced interrogation uh, techniques, waterboarding, etc., but they hadn't used them yet. We find out later that they had used them. Then we find out from her staff or several months later, or she does as well, that, that they are using them. And now we find out in this most recent statement that they explicitly said they were not using waterboarding. I don't know. It's hard to keep up your thoughts your well it, it, it just proves that it's tough to be a monday morning quarterback when you were actually on the field the previous saturday i mean the fact of the matter is uh, she was the representative of the democratic party on the intelligence committee that got the top flight briefings i previously served on the intelligence committee although i was not a ranking member i've sat through briefings from the cia and other intelligence agencies it is beyond belief at least you have to be pretty naive in my judgment to think that the top person of either party would sit there with the briefing and not ask questions and accept the fact that they'd been that, that they'd had explained to them some enhanced interrogation techniques and never believe they were going to be used why would they be informing them that they were going through the process for it i mean uh, you know you've been around uh, the block here in washington dc does that sound credible to you it seems to me that if they briefed or both of you gentlemen, if they briefed her, they did so with the purpose of getting her tacit approval. And uh, that's what they thought they got. Maybe they didn't get it. Here's Porter Goss, by the way. He was the top Republican. He was the uh, chairman at that time. Here's his account of that briefing, which he shared with uh, Nancy Pelosi at the time. I am slack jawed to read that members claim to have not understood that the techniques on which they were briefed were to actually be employed or that specific techniques such as waterboarding were never mentioned. So, I mean, this is so hard for you, gentlemen. Uh, Congressman Sestak, again, it's tough. Neither one of you gentlemen were in that briefing, but we're hearing a he said, she said. On the one side, you got the he's. In this case, I think they're all he's. The CIA briefer, I assume, maybe just because they're mostly he's over there, who knows? He says that she was briefed. In fact, briefed on the fact that waterboarding was used and had been used, period. Simple as that. Here it is, uh, Congresswoman, waterboarding's been used. The re ranking Republican who was the chair at that time, uh, Porter Goss, who later joined the intelligence community itself, he said 
that she was briefed very directly on the use of waterboarding in the past tense. Now, she says continually now she was never told it was used, only that it was authorized. Stick to this point if you can, Congressman Sestak. Is this fighting over how many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Or are we really into a problem here of testimony? Yeah, we are into an issue of accountability. I believe that's the most dire issue we have here in Washington, D.C. is congressional executive branch accountability, whether it's by an individual or whether we have a commission that looks into this. Look, it is just, it is a thousand angels on a head to some degree. We aren't going to know how to improve it. Did the seek, her secrecy oath prevent her from saying it or not? There's only one way, Chris, to get to this. And we've got some debris in our wake. And before this ship of state can continue on, we have got to have a nonpartisan that is a, a bipartisan, but it should be retired judges or someone. Keep it out of Congress because of all this fighting you hear and have people investigate this and look into it so we can apply lessons learned for the future. Can Congress, should it, how could it do better? That's the okay, issue your of, question besides first, the executive branch. Chris, you want to have a commission? Do you want witnesses speaking under oath? Yes, Mr. they should Sestak. have it. Here's what they do. Including Two things. the speaker. Two including things. the speaker. Two things. If they're... If, in the way it is in the, in the military, if an airplane crashes, there's two investigations. One, criminal court martial to see if something should be done. That, right. and, and the Justice Department should turn that over the court. On the other hand, we give immunity to everyone, the same people, to come before the commissions to say, what can we learn so okay. that our, we don't crash again and we can't crash again like this in the United States? Well, if there's immunity in the second case and the first one's a criminal matter, then they have to be under oath in both cases, right? Chris, yes. Chris, Chris. Mr. Sestak, you yes. would put the speaker under oath here as well, the speaker. I, I'd put anyone in America under oath if we can help improve good governance and accountability. Hey, Chris, Chris. Mr. Lundgren, would yeah. you put these people under oath, including the speaker, in this regard? If we're going to go, truth, if we're going to go, truth commission. if we're going to go down this line, I don't believe in a truth commission. But if we're going to go to this, down this line, it's got to be the legislative leaders as well as the executive branch leaders to know what they're doing, uh, know what they did. But actually, what we ought to be thinking about is the context in which these decisions were made. We forget what we were at. We were within a year of 9/11. We were having attacks around the world. There were uh, people dying in other countries, allies of ours. We were trying to obtain the best information we had at the time. Now, all of a sudden, people have forgotten that, and they want to make judgments outside the context of what happened at that time. And I think that leads us to erroneous conclusions. Secondly, remember what happened with the church commission. Yes, we had recommendations that came forward with respect to intelligence committees, but we also had a decimation of a whole generation of operatives in the CIA, human, human intelligence. And when the 9-11 Commission pointed out that that was one of the great failings of our intelligence prior to 9-11, we, we lost a generation of people that could get us information. Okay. And I fear we could have that same thing happen again, and that will not only affect up us, it will affect our children and our grandchildren. Okay, well, I agree with you on many points here, but again, let's not lose the truth here. Denying a person oxygen is torture. Thank you very much, U.S. Congressman Joe Sestak and U.S. Congressman Dan Lundgren. Up next, is President Obama right or 